this time we'd like to stand, please, and have our invocation and our pledge to the flag. Let us pray. Loving God, you called us to live together in this community, have blessed us with resources of things and people. Let our grateful hearts be expressed by being faithful stewards of what you provided to us and faithful to the citizens of this community. We ask that your blessing be upon us in all that we do, including tonight. And as we pray in your holy name, amen. Mm -hmm. amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Keeling, would you call the roll, please? Carrie Hodge, Ward 1. Here. Jay Stepp, Ward 2. Here. Lewis Tonsmeyer, Ward 3. Here. Lindsay McDaniel, Ward 4. Diane Tate, Ward 5. Here. Lori Pritt, Ward 6. Here. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, you have received the minutes from our previous May the 1st meeting, and everyone has had a chance, hopefully, to look over them. Do we have a motion to approve or amend, or what is your pleasure? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Thank you. First tonight on the agenda is a public hearing, first reading of zoning annexation. Mr. Menino. Thank you. As you noted, this is uh, one of four first readings we have. The first one is special use 1401. It is a request for a uh, religious facility or church that's already existing. It, it's over 100 years old. Uh, it's in a residential zoning district. and just to bring it into compliance because it's never um, had a use permit approved on it. Uh, we are going through this formality to bring it into that compliance. Uh, the church is looking to do some slight expansion of the existing footprint that's already out there. Uh, it is in the historic district. It has received approval from uh, the HPC at this time and also went before the planning commission last week and it was reviewed based on the standards, uh, the special use standards for, for a church. And with that, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this application. Uh, this, as, long as, as well as the other uh, three cases on the agenda, have all been properly posted and advertised, and there appears to be no conflicts. Any questions of Mr. Menino? Thank you, Andy. I will now open the floor for uh, anyone to comment in the public hearing part of the zoning special use. Is there anyone who would like to speak for or against? You're welcome to come on up. If you don't mind identifying yourself, please. Yes, my name is Randy Young. I'm with Young Goldstein Architects and I'm the architect of record for a Church of the Ascension and the work that is planned there. Um, I don't know how much of a presentation really is expected to tonight, but uh, I'd be glad to share for a moment with you what we're planning to do. If you like. Yes, sir, please. Uh, this is our site plan, which shows uh, generally what our plans are. The area that's in uh, tan here is the existing sanctuary, and with the exception of doing some re-roofing and some very minor repairs, we really do not plan to touch anything on the sanctuary. Church of Dissensions being very courageous with this project in that um, rather than just expanding their facility, they have a building uh, in their parish hall and education wing now that has, for a number of years now, had some significant maintenance issues and ongoing uh, problems. And uh, they've made the courageous decision to actually demolish that building and build it back with the same functions with a slight increase in footprint to accommodate their more current needs of, for growth. Um, so you can see here we're building a new parish hall in the same location as the parish hall is now. We are expanding bathrooms to bring them up to code to full compliance with ADA. Um, and nursery and classrooms in the education wing moved over towards uh, North Bartow Street. In very similar fashion to what uh, exists now. The areas of expansion are just a little bit larger toward the parking lot, back here in this area, a little bit along this edge, put it next to their Ascension House, which is where their offices are now, and a little bit in this area right here to increase their needs for um, sacristy and their kitchen and so forth. So, um, and all 
overall total is less than 1,000 square feet. Um, the uh, general I was telling Mr. Tonsmeyer earlier that um, um, I'm not the type of architect that uh, has to really make my mark and do something distinctly different um, when we're making and doing an addition. In fact, here, uh, our goal is to uh, do this new addition as if it, and make it look compatible with the um, existing Carpenter Gothic Church sanctuary as if it had been there all along. And so that's, you can see here in the front elevation on uh, Cherokee um, that we've tried to accomplish that. The parish hall that exists now, we're actually in fact um, to some degree uh, carrying forward the same theme of appearance that, uh, that it has now in the front. Although because the building is coming forward just a little bit, accommodating the porch and all that they do not have now. So, which also addresses their uh, memorial garden much more um, uh, appropriately than it does now. And we have, the, of course, the requisite Episcopal red door. I wonder how many of these churches with this architecture are left in the nation now. Uh, there are quite a few actually mm -hmm. around. You, you have to sort of seek them out. Uh, mm -hmm. The Carpenter Gothic style is uh, one that was quite popular in smaller communities. Uh, they couldn't afford to do a, a, a larger, much uh, more substantial brick structure. Uh, and it was developed um, around the, oh, was it around, around, it came in vogue around the long before this church was built. Um, and if you, um, you can seek them out, there are a number scattered throughout Georgia. Um, but you really have to kind of look for them and know what they're going to do. Um, just a couple of other pieces of information uh, to, to share with you. This is um, the new, what would be our new rear elevation, which addresses the parking lot. Um, we're trying to bring a little more um, identity and style to the, to the rear elevation, which is a little bit plain right now. They're, they're lovely sketches. That, that's kind Absolutely. of our program. Um, we anticipate um, trying to start construction hopefully as soon as we finish our process here sometime in late June. Thank you. Any, Any questions? questions? Thank you. Appreciate that. And I, I forgot to mention, I wanted to introduce Jeff Tindall, who's here. He's our junior warden. Um, Reverend Mary. Not able to attend tonight because she didn't take a deal. So. Well, thank you so much. Thank appreciate, you. appreciate the presentation. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the audience? If not, I'll close this public hearing. And this is the first reading tonight, and so a decision uh, will be made in two weeks. If that's uh, and Long. Madam uh, Mayor Pro Tem, I just want to mention, though I have no 
financial interest in this. I am a member of record of the church. I will not be at the next meeting, and I won't vote on this matter. I'll recuse myself. Okay. All right. I have a little history at Ascension. History, too. <laughs> <laughs> you built the church or I don't something. Think yeah, it, no. I don't think it disqualified me, though. Okay. <laughs> So the church was there when they built the original. Yes, that's right. right. I mean, you're right, and I appreciate you standing <laughs> next to me when you're done. Our city manager made me aware it will actually be three weeks. A long month. It, it's a long month, so it will actually be the first meeting in June. But thank you very much. Appreciate you coming. You're welcome to stay or um, or go. Either one. Appreciate it. Next tonight is the annexation, is only application by Michael Howron. Uh, it's a city annexation initiative for 1300 Highway 411. Mr. Menino. Uh, yes, thank you. As you noted, this is uh, part of the Donut Hole Initiative. It's completely surrounded by city jurisdiction. Uh, the property there at 1300 Highway 411. Um, it's currently zoned C1 commercial in the county. Uh, they're looking to annex it into the city with the GC general commercial zoning category. The general commercial will be in compliance with all the surrounding property, which is already zoned general commercial. Uh, all the departments in the city that review the zoning requests have reviewed it and there were no objections. Additionally, the county has reviewed the annexation and they have no objections to the request with that. Planning Commission uh, reviewed it based on the standards, uh, zoning standards, and with that, they recommended uh, this for your approval. Any questions of Mr. Menino? Thank you, Randy. I'll now open a public hearing for 1300 Highway 411. If there's anyone who would wish to come and speak for or against. Seeing no one come forward, I will close the public hearing. And this again will be uh, read, Mr. Vance, the first Thursday in June. Next tonight is um, annexation and zoning application by Fritz Dent. This is also a donut initiative and uh, it is our 20 single family. I have lost my place on the property. Mr. Menino. Uh, thank you again. Uh, this property is currently A1 agricultural in the county's zoning maps, but okay. as you can see, it's one of several lots that's completely surrounded by city jurisdiction. Uh, most of that area is single family residential R20 zoning. The applicant is uh, desiring to bring it in at the R20 zoning district. It's currently a two acre lot. A few of the lots on that street are currently in the city jurisdiction. The city departments reviewed it. Uh, there were no objections from the city departments. Additionally, the county made comment and they had no objections to bringing this into the city jurisdiction. Uh, we reviewed it based on the standards for exercise of zoning powers. And with that, Planning Commission is recommending it for approval. Thank you. Any questions of Randy? Is the Lutheran Church at that site too? Um, I believe so. If nothing else, I will now open it public hearing for this zoning. If there's anyone who would like to come forward for or against. Thank you. Uh, if there are no other questions by council, this will be heard again with a second reading, the first meeting in June. Last tonight of our rezoning applications by Terry and Lou Ann Tumlin for Zero to 28 Opal Street. Uh, yes, the, the zero, there is an undeveloped parcel there. The darkest parcel in the middle has no address, so it shows up on the, on the maps as zero Opal Street. And the adjacent lot on the far right is actually 28 Opal Street. With that, uh, this property was, half of it was zoned MU in the original 1996 zoning map. It was actually split zoned. Uh, leaving a portion of it R15. 
with that the applicant desires to get rid of the split zoning on it so the entire parcel is the MU zoning district uh, everything across the street or on the south side of Opal is already zoned MU and again half this property is already zoned MU and with that staff did review it based on the standards for exercise of zoning powers and the Planning Commission reviewed it based on those same standards city departments that review these applications have reviewed them and have no objections and in order to correct the split zoning on this property the planning commission did recommend this for approval thank you <coughs> any questions of mr menino thank you i will now open the floor for a public <coughs> hearing for the property zero to 28 opal street from R15 to multi-use. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Yeah, there's some here. Okay. <coughs> Mayor Mike, uh, my name is Gene Vance. I live at 41 Thoroughbred Lane. I'm here on behalf of the, uh, the estate and also Dr. Tumlin, if anyone has any questions. Any questions of Mr. Vance? Gene, thank, thank you for coming Thanks. tonight. Appreciate it. If there's no other questions, I will now close the public hearing. And Gene, you heard that we will be hearing it again the first, the first weekend. Thank you. At this time, we will hear from uh, Dan, uh, Property and Casual Insurance. Yes, Mayor Pro Tem. The, uh, the city issued a request for proposal for insurance renewal on a property and casual insurance broker service as well as workers' compensation. Six proposals were received. Uh, a couple city council members and myself sat down and interviewed a few of the broker, brokers and agents and after that interview process selected public risk underwriters as the best choice for the broker record for the city services for the next fiscal year well i for one appreciate two of the council members agreeing to serve on the committee and um, thank you on behalf of all of us any questions if there's no questions uh any motion Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. GDOT reimbursement for pole installation for the electric department. Mr. Hampton. Uh, yes, this is a consideration for an agreement uh, that uh, the GDOT came and approached us about. It's at the corner of uh, Felton Road and Tennessee Street, and it's in, in lieu of their one pole one corner initiative to combine utilities and traffic signals all on one pole to cut down on uh, having so many uh, obstacles at an intersection when you have an accident and things of that nature and just clean the corners up uh, the uh, the total cost of installing the poles that they that they've uh, asked for self-supporting concrete poles was uh, forty thousand six hundred and sixty five dollars uh, that that the GDOT uh, reimbursement agreement would take care of it would be of no cost to the city uh, we just need the agreement to be signed. So um, you, if you have any questions, we, we have gotten, uh, that's a turnkey installation. There'll be a contractor install the poles, the cost of the poles, <coughs> transfer of utilities for the electric department and everything. It's, it's a turnkey installation. You and I talked about it during the work session just a bit. There's no negatives associated with this. No, there's no negatives. It's, it's, uh, appearance is better, it's safer. Uh, it's, just a, a less confusion when poles get damaged who owns it it's just one pole will know who owns it so. good for the city yes ma'am any other questions do i have a motion, a motion to approve. thank Second. you all in favor all right. Aye. thank you any opposed thank you g dot standard traffic signal thank you mayor pro tem yes. and council Mr. sanders this item is uh, we're requesting permission for the mayor to sign all the related documents uh, in, related to the permit signal application for a signal at Cherokee Place and State Route 113 East Main Street. Um, this includes the permit application, a communication and power agreement, and any other documents that GDOT needs us to sign. Um, the purpose for uh, the Publix has applied for a signal permit and, and has agreed to fund the cost of the signal, but the GDOT requires the local government to actually sign the permit application 
as the permittee because for a couple reasons they want to make sure that the local government agrees with the uh, that a signal is um, necessary at that location and also they want they require the local government to uh, pay for the any communications cost and for the power to operate the signal um, on a uh, regular basis so um, so these are the reasons they require us to sign these documents even though we're not the one installing the signal. Tommy, when was the last time we had a company pay for a signal? Can you remember? Um, it's pretty, pretty nice of Publix to step up. Yeah, I, I don't recall. I don't recall either, do you say? No. I do not. Um, they won't pay for it though, David said he would. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have any questions? <laughs> Margaret, I see you back there. Thank you for all your work and, and push on this. Absolutely. Would you like to come up and say it? Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you back on the back row. Are there? Okay. God, don't let her start talking. <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate your Facebook buddy of mine and, and I've kept up with, with your concerns about this. Any questions of Tommy? Yes, sir. Would there be any changes to the intersection cell towers or just installing the signals? There's no change to the turn lane or anything like that? There are some changes. There'd be some striping. Oh. There'd have to be. Good question. Yeah. If there are no other questions, do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, Margaret, you can clap. You can clap if you want to. <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> okay, yes, sir, a resurfacing contract. We, uh, yes, ma'am, this item is for a resurfacing project. Uh, we opened bids on May 2nd. We had five bidders. The lowest three bids were C.W. Matthews at $690,699. Northwest Georgia Paving at 694 471.40 and Bartow Paving at 708 279.17. Uh, so we had three bidders within uh, $18,000 of each other, which is about 3% of the project cost. Very tight bids, which, is, which usually means um, it was a good bid package. Um, and uh, we recommend approval of the low bidder we are funding this project through a combination of LMIG grant and uh, the 2003 SPLOS money. We have uh, our grant from last year, $178,000 in hand. We're going to get another $178,000 in July and $400,000 from 2003 SPLOS for a total of $756,000. So we would like permission to. Uh, to award this at 690 and spend up to 756 um, if approved. And what we would do is we would probably, hopefully, add a few roads to the contract with the extra money. And Etowah is in this? Yes. Yes, sir. Etowah Drive is in this. Okay. Thank you. Any questions of Mr. Sanders? If there aren't any questions, do I have a motion with an up to, please? I move that. Second. And that motion includes up to up 756. To okay, yes, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Next tonight, Jones Mill Road Sewer Relocation Project. Mr. Jones. Thank you and good evening. We received bids for this project uh, last Friday, received three bids. Uh, the low bidder was T.J. Lyle and Company at $55,000 even. Uh, we need to do this project. There's a uh, culvert under Jones Mill Road that is failing, and the replacement culvert will be larger than the existing one, which puts us in conflict with the repair, thus we need to move. Um, so, so this is actually a, a, an emergency type work that we need to do and would recommend your approval so that those uh, repairs can be made. Any questions of Bob? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? No. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Bob. 
Next, uh, Jones Mill Road water relocation project. Mr. Right. Jones, this, again. this will be all the same justifications. It's still related to the culvert. We have water and sewer lines that are both in conflict with that repair. Again, bids were received last uh, Friday. Low bidder was TJ Lyle and Company at $28,000 even and would recommend your approval for all the same reasons previously stated. And we've used this company before. We have. They have done uh, numerous projects for us. Uh, probably the most recent one that you're familiar with is the South Irwin Street water line that went in about a year or two years ago. Because we're fortunate to have a very low bid on this. We are. Uh, we were very excited to see that number. Any questions of Mr. Jones? Do I have a motion? Thank you. I'll second that. Good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Reinhardt with our monthly financial statement. Mayor Pro Tem and Council. We'll be looking at the March 2014 and comparing it to March 2013. I would like to point out real quick that the report that I have on the uh, viewing screen is a little bit different from what you have in your packet. Uh, when I was making my notes to present tonight, did, did I came across. Did it get worse since you put it out? I'm sorry? It didn't get worse since you put it out. No. It? no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, only, the only change that I did make was in the fiber area. And in the general fund, revenues increased over last year by $639,000. Expenses increased also by $1.13 million. This increase is due to increased personnel expenses, increased operating expenses, and the payment of the TANS. Three years of revenue that I look at on a monthly basis are the local option sales tax. We've had, got a decrease there, of about $206,000. Police fines and forfeitures, we've got a decrease of $102,000 and billing permits and inspection fees have an increase of about $22,000. The water and sewer fund revenues increased over last year by $441,000. Expenses have increased by $1.4 million. This is due to increased personnel, operating, debt service, and capital expenses. And the capital expenses are being offset by uh, bond proceeds from 2012. And the gas fund revenues have increased over last year by $3.6 million. Expenses have increased by $3.7 million. This is increases due to increased personnel expenses, operating expenses, cost of purchase gas, and capital <coughs> expenses. In the electric fund, revenues have increased by $285,000. Expenses decreased by $393,000. This is due to decreased operating and capital expenses coupled with increased personnel expenses and increased cost of purchase electricity. In the stormwater fund, Revenues decreased over last year by $68,000. Expenses decreased by $335,000. This is due to a, an increase in personnel and operating expenses offset by decrease in capital expenses. And in solid waste fund, the revenues de increased over last year by $138,000. And expenses decreased by uh, $29,000. This decrease is due mainly to increased personnel and operating expenses, again offset by decreased capital expenses. And in the fiber fund, revenues increased from last year by $104,000. Expenses decreased by $9,400. And this is due mainly to increased personnel expenses and operating expenses, coupled again with a decrease in capital expenses. That's my report for the evening. Thank you, Mr. Reinhardt. Any questions? So everyone had increased personnel and operating expenses. Was there something different a year ago from this year that Cost of health insurance. Cost of health insurance. That's okay. Cost of health insurance, and namely, and uh, coupled with the cost of um, there were no salary increases. I, I, let, me, let me assure you. But the main, the, the biggest point is is the cost of health insurance, dental insurance, and uh, workers' comp insurance. You're welcome. Thank you, Tom. Anything you. else for Mr. Reinhardt? Anything else tonight? Yes, sir, Greg. Yes, sir, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Uh, just a uh, recognition uh, that our swimming pools will be open uh, next Saturday, May the 24th. Uh, Dellinger Pool and Aubrey Street Pool for the season opens at uh, 12, 12 noon Saturday, May 24th. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Good, good, good. <clears throat> We get a report to council, and I want to recognize a, a couple of folks. The Cartersville Water Department 
won the 2014 water taste test for District 1. Um, can't beat that. We want to have the best tasting water, and I think we do. And the cheapest. Thank you, Mr. Grove. The Cartersville <laughs> Electric System <laughs> recently completed, competed in the Lineman Rodeo competition and won in several of those events. So we always like to recognize our employees. Also, this weekend is the Ramble. We will have um, pushing 400 people in town, and they will be eating in our restaurants and staying in our hotels and on our streets. Thank you, thank you, Tommy. I hope you will tell all the Public Works guys how much we appreciate all the pine straw and the cleaning of the sidewalks. And this will be a nice long weekend. And we hope our business people benefit from it. And we hope the whole city will be hospitable to folks as they come in. But thanks to all of our employees. Chief, I know you're bringing the uh, 1917 fire truck over. 1918, I was a year off. Um, so a lot of people, Final City Hall's been spiffed up. A lot of people have gone to trouble, and the downtown looks really lovely. So thanks to all. Is there anything else tonight? Okay. Have a nice long weekend.